Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing some French country thrift flips. For my first project, I'm going to be working on this little bird statue. I did pick this up at the thrift store, but I believe they're also at one of the dollar stores here in Australia. My first step is to put some of Dixie Belle's chocolate, chalk mineral paint in a container, and then I'm going to add some of Dixie Belle's sea spray texture additive. This is definitely my go-to when it comes to creating some texture on a piece, creating some interest. So I'm stirring that really well. You can see it's thickened up nicely and then I'm going to take a chip brush and I'm going to start dabbing and stippling the product onto my little birds. You can find a full product list in the description below and all these products on our website theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. My vision for this project was a statue that's perhaps sat in the garden for many years and has become weathered and worn and this sea spray is going to be a really great base for that look. Once my sea spray has dried I'm going to take Dixie Belle's iron patina paint and I'm going to be putting it in a few areas on these birds. I'm first going to stir it really well. You want to get all of those little metal particles stirred up really well and then I'm going to dab the product on. By dabbing it on I'm going to create a little bit more texture. Now I always put a little bit more on than I'm going to need because I like to come in later and actually layer some more paint over the top of it so that it looks a little bit more like natural age. So I'm going to dab that iron patina paint on and once I have that layer on I'm then also going to be coming in with Dixie Belle's bronze patina paint. The iron patina paint will give us a rust look. The bronze paint usually gives us a blue green sort of a patina. So I'm stirring up the bronze paint really well, just like we did with the first one. And then I'm going to dab that on. I did end up drying the iron patina paint before I came in with the bronze, just so I didn't have too much of the mixing. So again, I'm just picking certain areas where I'm going to apply that product. And then I'm going to let both these layers dry. When you're using patina paint, you want to put down your first coat, let it dry, and then you're going to come in with a second coat. And while that coat is still wet is when you come in with the green activation spray. You will not get a patinaed result if your patina paint isn't wet. So we're coming in with our wet coat now. You can see that I'm adding the iron patina first, and then I will come in with the bronze. I am trying my best not to contaminate the colors. I'm just trying to keep the different patina paints in their different sections. And then while my paint is still wet, I am going to be using some of that green activation spray. I've put it in a smaller bottle here and I'm just going to spray it all over my little birds there. Patina paint can be very unpredictable. Sometimes it activates the entire thing. Sometimes there's only bits and pieces and sometimes the colors are a little bit different, but that's the beauty of it. It's going to give you that beautifully aged look. I then left this to dry overnight. And here is the result the next day. You can see I have some rust. I have some of that blue green patina. I'm now going to come in with some of Dixie Belle's Umber Silk Mineral Paint and you can see I'm dabbing it all over the little birds but I'm allowing some of that patina that we created to peek through. I don't want to cover all of it but I also don't want all of it showing because it doesn't look very realistic right now. But once I'm coming in and layering that Umber paint over the top of it, it starts to look a little bit more natural. So I'm just going to dab and stipple that all over in random sections, allowing some of the rust, allowing some of that blue-green patina to peek through. Once it's dry, you can see here that it's looking a lot more naturally aged. I am now going to come in with some of Dixie Belle's gloss clear coat and I'm going to seal the entire piece. Now, Umber Silk Mineral Paint does have a built-in sealer, but I didn't cover the whole area with it. So I just want to make sure that I have the entire piece sealed for our next step. Once 
Once the clear coat had dried, I grabbed some of Dixie Belle's whitewash glaze and I'm working it into the detail of those little birds. I'm making sure that it's going into all of the little creases of the wings, into the details of the face. And then I'm going to take a wet wipe and I'm going to dab and pull back some of that excess. This is going to give it, again, a weathered look. It's going to look a little bit oxidized and I'm going to make sure that I do get majority of the white off the sections where the patina is because I do still want to be able to see that peeking through. If you want to achieve a similar look but you don't have that white glaze you could use a white wax for this step instead or perhaps create a white paint wash with a watered down chalk paint. And here's a look at our finished bird statue. I love how this turned out. All of that layering has really helped to create a beautiful weathered and worn look. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. For our next project, I'm going to be using this piece of wood that I had in my stash, and I'm also going to be using some drop cloth. I'm measuring out how much I need. You can see that I'm starting off the cut and then I'm tearing the edges. I want a primitive look for these, and I want the drop cloth to sit on the inside. I want some of that wood showing around the edges. So I'm just tearing it until I have it to the size I want. I'm then going to take some simple golden tacks, some thumbtacks, and I'm just sticking them into some cardboard so that I can take it outside and I can spray these with some of Rust-Oleum's black spray paint. If you haven't guessed already, we're creating a primitive style artwork. I'm using some rice paper by Would You Bend. This is called the Cottage Cart. I need to get rid of the excess paper from around the edge. So I've got some water on an artist brush and I'm tracing a line down the side there where I want to rip the paper. I want a torn edge here because we are trying to create what looks like a painted canvas. So I need that line to be a little bit more organic. So I'm just going to add that water where I want it to go and then I'm going to tear it off. Now this rice paper is a little bit thicker, so it does take a little bit more water to be able to tear the paper away. For this project, I'm going to be decoupaging this rice paper onto the drop cloth. I don't know how it would work with your more traditional tissue paper. This rice paper is a little bit thicker, so I feel like I'm going to have a bit more success with it. I'm laying down a thick coat of Dixie Belle's flat clear coat. You can see I'm working in sections. And then I'm taking a ball of cling wrap and smoothing that rice paper down on top of the section that has the product. Any areas that I miss, I'll lift up and I'll add a little bit more of that product. So I'm going to repeat the same process and work my way across until I have all of that rice paper adhered down. So again, this is meant to look like a painted canvas that an artist has then torn off the canvas frame and mounted on some wood. I was inspired by some pictures that I saw on Pinterest and thought I would give it a go. Now, this rice paper is a little bit thicker. So again, I don't know how you'd go with tissue paper. I feel that you may actually get a bit of tearing. I think it'd be something you'd have to experiment with. So I have all of my image down and now I'm going to go around the edges and add more of that flat clear coat and I'm going over the top of my image as well to seal it all in. Now I have got it sitting on the wood that we're going to use but it's not going to get stuck there. The product is still wet underneath. I just didn't want it laying down on that brown paper and have it getting stuck there. 
Once this was dry, I took the little canvas and started scrunching it to create some lines and to create some age. So you can see that it's crinkling the paper a little bit. And then I'm going to also take some fine grit sandpaper and gently rub it over the top of that rice paper. This is going to create more of a worn look. Again, I want this to look like an old piece of art that was found in maybe a, a French artist's workshop. I just sort of had a really primitive look in mind. So this uh, sandpaper is really going to help us achieve that look. Next, I'm going to apply one coat of Dixie Belle's Umber Silk Mineral Paint over the entire piece of my wood. I'm going to put it down the sides as well because they look a little bit unfinished. And this has a built-in top coat, so I'm not going to have to add a clear coat over the top. Once that's dry, I can add my artwork. So I'm going to lay it down in the position where I want it to go. And I'm going to be using those little thumbtacks that we spray painted black. I'm going to position them in each of the corners and then use a hammer to hammer them in place. So this is what's going to hold our little canvas art in place. And it's also going to look really good. It looks really primitive. So I'm going to just work my way around and add those tacks in the spots where I want them to go. Once I have all my little tacks in place, I did start to fuss at the edges a little bit. I started to pull some more of those little strands away. Again, just adding to that primitive and worn look. I wanted to age the fabric around the outside of the artwork a little bit more, so I'm using some of Dixie Belle's All Natural Voodoo Gel Stain. I started applying it around the edges and then felt like maybe it was a little bit too thick, so I did grab a little cap full of water. I added a little bit of that to my All Natural Stain, and then I started adding it around the edges. You can see any time that I get it on the artwork itself or on our little tacks, I just use my finger to blend it a little bit because I do want those tacks to look a little bit older with the stain on it, but I don't want it to look too obvious. So I'm just going to work my way around the edges until I have covered all of the outside of our artwork. I also then came in with my brown wax brush. I never washed this, so it just has little remnants of that wax, and I just sort of dabbed it around the edges. And finally, to make sure I didn't have any really obvious creases, I put down some baking paper and I used an iron on cotton setting to smooth out any wrinkles. I'll also attach a hanger on the back. And here's our finished artwork. I love how this turned out. I feel like it really does look like it came from an old artist's workshop in the French countryside. Let me know what you think of this project in the comments. Our final project today is this little ceramic vase or urn. It was beautiful. I did look it up to see if it had any extra value, but it had a lot of damage. There was a lot of petals and things broken off it. So we're going to paint it. I'm going to add some of Dixie Belle's Latte Limited Edition Fall Color just to my container that I had my chocolate sea spray in before. I don't mind if it darkens up a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit of sea spray to that as well. We're going to add some texture to this vase to give it a bit more of a weathered look. So I'm going to stir it really well. And then I'm going to be applying the product with a little chip brush. So I'm going to dab it and stipple it all over. Now I have already sprayed this piece with Rust-Oleum's Clear Matte Sealer. It is a little bit shiny, so that is going to help my paint to stick. I went with this latte color because I felt like it would look really good as a layer underneath because we are going to come in with another layer of paint soon. So I always like to think of my projects 
in layers and think about what's going to be showing through if I'm going to be doing some distressing. So you can see I've created some lovely texture here and I'm now going to mix up some of Fusion's toasted coconut milk paint. I've measured out a capful and then I'm going to put an equal amount of water into that milk paint and stir it well. I'm then going to add a little bit of Dixie Belle's clear wax to some of the areas that I want to be able to distress back. This just really helps when it comes to doing wet distressing. It makes the job a little bit easier. And then I'm going to start applying my milk paint. I'm only going to be applying one thick coat, so I'm laying it on. And again, you'll notice that I am skipping over some of that texture. You can see some of that latte showing through. And this is by design. We want it to look like that paint has chipped off over the years to reveal the layers underneath. I did have to work a little bit harder to get into some of the details of those florals. But again, I am happy for some of that latte to show through. So I'm gonna work my way around until I've painted the entire piece. Before my paint has completely dried, I'm going to take my heat gun and I'm going to speed up that drying process. I want to be able to achieve some texture here, some cracking, and milk paint is perfect for this sort of a technique and speeding up that drying process really helps to achieve that wonderfully aged chippy look. I'll then do some wet distressing on some of the details and seal with easy peasy spray wax. And here's a look at our finished project. I love how this turned out. It is a completely refreshed look for this piece and now you don't even notice that those little petals have come away. Let me know what you think of this project in the comments. I really hope that you have enjoyed today's projects. I certainly had a lot of fun trying out some new techniques. Let me know if you had a favorite project from today. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment, and share it out to a friend that you think might enjoy it. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used in today's video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.